Hello, I'm Donald Leggett and welcome to Share Views, brought to you by London South East. We have a special treat for you, with not one but two analysts from SP Angel in the studio. Let me introduce Tanya McKeever, Special Situations Analyst, and our colleague Liam Gascoigne-Cohen, a Healthcare Analyst. SP Angel acts as nomad and broker for Tech Capital, who buy and commercialise technologies developed by universities. And today we're talking about Tech Capital. Okay, welcome guys. Good to be here. Thanks for okay. having us. It's a pleasure. Now, Tanya, let me start by asking you, SP Angel, who are SP Angel? What do they do? SP Angel is a corporate advisory partnership. We provide advisory services to AIM clients, so nominated advisor and broking services. We also help advise companies on Next, Standard List, and other private companies. And special situations. Uh, what exactly is special situations and how do tech <laughs> capital fit into special situations? Special situations is kind of the lines between all the traditional sectors where they don't quite fit into, you know, technology or healthcare and, you know, they fit in the middle. So special situations. Okay. And tech capital. Tech capital is one of your clients? Is yes, right? they are. They're, we provide nomad and broking services to tech capital. And how would you summarize uh, tech capital? Um, tech capital is a, it's a, an, an an investment IP company um, with multiple platforms. Um, the first platform, Professional Services Tech Transfer, they actually have a network of, of university IP globally with over 4,000 universities. And what they do is, is track and, and evaluate that IP and provide those um, provide companies with access to that IP. Do they use that network? Um, to, to, to find new good ideas. Is they that what do. it's all about? So they help companies who are looking to make sure that they have you know, a full complement of IP in, for their businesses, but they also have access to themselves in order to acquire IP and develop companies on their so investment portfolio. It's quite clever, then. Very, yes. And why universities? What's good about uh, picking up IP from universities? I mean, that's where most of the research and development stems from and some really interesting ideas um, from around the world and, you know, across all kinds of macro themes. Okay, Clifford Gross is the, is the chairman, he's yes. the boss. Yes. What makes Clifford uh, Gross quite a special individual? Clifford's been, you know, he's got extensive experience in the business. He's an academic and entrepreneur. He's got, you know, experience in developing IP as well as in venture capital funding. And he's also developed and or established a very extensive network of, of scientists and professionals who can assist him in, in his ventures. So why tech capital and not somebody else? There's lots and lots of other people uh, doing this same thing. So what's good about uh, Clifford Gross's uh, methodology that other people couldn't necessarily do? Well, we like his, his, his multi, the two divisions of his platform. So the first one is professional services. It actually has de you know, developed a business out of um, managing and evaluating tech transfer and IP for companies. And that it's helps. It's essentially a, 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 a consultancy business yes. a, a designed to cover the costs of tech capital. Is yes. That, is that an accurate summary? That's a good, good summary, but it also helps to leverage the IP that sometimes lays you know, a little less undervalued in, in universities themselves and helps companies you know, access IP that we they wouldn't necessarily be able to access without uh, it. Tech capital have, have, in their portfolio of companies have got uh, five five uh, uh, good ideas at the moment. They do. But net asset values, it's 70% 70, 70 undervalued. It's 70% underwater. That's not good. Why? Well, I mean, they've got some very good investment IP and portfolio companies, it takes a long time to develop this IP from R&D to commercialization. And, you know, since IPO in 2014, they've taken these companies a long way. And they're at some critical turning points for the companies okay. right Talking now. of critical turning points, Liam, Bellascura is uh, um, possibly closest to commercialization in terms of the products. So what's, what's the lead product and where is, where is that at the moment? Yep. So Tech Capital have uh, around a 90% holding in Bellascura, and Bellascura is a medical device company, and their lead product is a medical device called Explore, and that's basically a product called an oxygen concentrator, and this is for a market of respiratory diseases. Um, so they've developed the product, and they've submitted an application to the US Food and Drug Administration for marketing approval, and they expect to uh, achieve an approval decision 
at this half of 2020. So what does that product actually look like? Paint us, paint us a picture of what that oxygen, that portable yeah. oxygen machine might actually look like. And why is it, why is it a big deal? So it's a portable, portable device. We've seen it as around sort of this size. And basically, it's for patients suffering from chronic obstructive pul pulmonary diseases, which are long-term pro progressive diseases, which means the patients can't intake the uh, adequate amount of oxygen themselves. Therefore, they need a product to help them, um, help them uh, inhale oxygen. Um, so this oxygen uh, concentrator, what we like about it is it's portable. It's lightweight compared to its uh, competitors. And it also um, is scalable. So if a patient is suffering patient's disease progresses, they're able to install another cartridge which enables them to keep using the same product itself, but they're able to, um, the uh -huh. device is able to provide more oxygen. Repeat business stream. Yeah, correct. Very good. Um, what's the, what's the, 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 the market size, the ex expected market size for, a, for that device? So respiratory diseases uh, is a large market itself at the moment, it's around, it's over the billion uh, dollar mark and it's significantly growing with an uh, aging population and uh, pollution. Um, so it's a large and growing area um, which uh, Bellascura can enter into. Portable oxygen machines, what's the competition like? Um, so it varies, so you might have seen them but a lot of, uh, a lot of sufferers uh, have large oxygen tanks which they have to um, which they have to uh, wheel behind them, which is not uh, ideal if you're suffering from a respiratory okay. disease. It, it's grim, to be fair. Yeah, correct. And there's other there's other products on the market, but they're they're slightly heavier. It doesn't have that scalability as well. You have to buy a new product um, uh, to, if you uh, need more oxygen, and also um, then. Uh, Tell me when the FDA approval is uh, expected. So it's expected uh, uh, in H120. So it's the balls in the FDA's court now. So we expect the approval decision to come this half of the year. Is that a, is it a long process? How long? You know, talk me through it. Um, it's it's a medical device, so it's a shorter process than the the sort of therapeutic pathway. So it's sort of six to uh, six to eight months time. Now, are there white, white puffs of smoke coming from the Vatican, the F FDA Vatican? What can we expect here? Have, you know, does the company know anything? Um, so they would have been in dialogue with the FDA to submit the, uh, submit the package um, for approval. Um, but, uh, so there might be some dialogue uh, if the FDA have any questions, but we should expect a, um, an approval decision uh, this half of the year. Okay. Uh, Tanya, Solarius. Talk me yes. through Solarius, which is microsold. Which sounds like a, a, a fantastic product. Tell me all about it. Well, it's in the food tech industry and and fits into sort of health and wellness and and improving your food intake. So microsalt is basically a microformulation of a salt that um, delivers 50% less sodium in the content of the product mm -hmm. and doesn't change the taste or the texture of the product, which is really you important. You promised me it really foods. doesn't taste the taste or change the texture. It doesn't. I've texture. actually tasted it on their own. On their own, They're developing a, a, their own potato chip product, and they've actually tasted it, and it, you can't tell the difference. Um, and they've done a couple of deals with uh, distributors or, 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 or sales teams. Tell us about those. So they had their first commercial agreement with a snack food producer out of Mexico last year. Um, with follow-on orders, and that's their first step into the, the commercial sort of world. And they've uh, signed some agreements with some U.S. distributors for product uh, distribution in the U.S. It may not be public knowledge, but how much money are these things for? And you know, what, what kind of revenue streams can we expect? I mean, the snack food market is about a $600 billion market globally, and, you know, with changing food preferences and uh, people on the go so much. They've been substituting proper meals with snack food. So, healthy, and healthy, healthy snack he, Healthy food is a theory. It but is. in practice, people like eating the, 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 the rubbish stuff, don't they? They do, but now you get 50% less salt from this product in your, in your potato chips or your nuts or your almonds or whatever the product is. Will, will, will regulators insist on using products like Microsoft if it exists? I mean, they are already. I mean, there's a huge push across the US um, and North America for reduced salt content in foods, and we're seeing the regulation come through now. Well, it does sound absolutely fascinating. Okay, so um, uh, Tech Capital have got, uh, have got uh, five companies. Um, what, what, what's the future for those companies? Uh, Belluscura, if I understand correctly, has almost got to the point of being spun out. Is that, the, is that the future for all these different ideas? If they can be commercialized, 
they'll have their own management teams and then be sp spun off. So they each each company has its own management team with its own expertise related to that product or you know service. Um, the idea is to to work on an exit strategy, and some will actually be you know an independent spin out. Some may get bought out by you know other bigger global players in the market. Oh, so the, um, the exit might not be, might not be... Uh, it's not cookie cutter for every company, but it, you know, it, whatever makes sense will, will, will be what gets executed. Right. Okay, tough, tough question. Coming to the back end of the interview, uh -huh. so you can relax, Tanya. But what kind of progress has tech capital made in the last couple of years? And what can we look forward to in the next couple of years? I mean, I think each of their you know, investment portfolio companies have, have done really well in their own right. I mean, Velascura is reaching commercialization this year. Solarius just hit the mark last year. Uh, Lucid, which is the smart tech glasses, which is a really interesting product, is, is in the market today in the U.S. and they're expanding their distribution capabilities, you know, through Amazon and globally um, in the wearables market. Guidance for autonomous vehicles a little bit further behind in terms of R&D, but that industry itself is just starting to come on stream. You know, I think we'll get a lot of news from, you know, an R&D-based individual companies to, to commercialization. Which part of the, uh, the automated vehicle uh, does Guidant provide? What do they do? They, they're actually working on, on software platforms to, to improve safety and to integrate the various systems that are going to be required for autonomous vehicles. So things like automatically stopping and stuff like that? Yes, so it's, I mean, we're st it's still in relatively early stages of development, but it, um, it's about an integrated platform offering. So who's that who's the leader can, in that field? Is it people like Tesla? And I mean, Tesla's working on it. I, all the big car companies are working on it, as well as a number of the, you know, I know Google and Apple both have some investments in the space as well. And would Guidance sell their products to all those players? They're going to be part of an integrated sort of platform, so their components will be used and by other businesses in their platforms. So exciting, but not quite at the commercialization stage. Yes, because we're still, you know, we're still working on all of the aspects of what's required in the infrastructure for autonomous vehicles on the street. Okay, final question. Interesting company, Tech Capital, clearly. Um, how would you summarize the, the investment story for old and new investors? Um, I mean, there's been a lot of a lot of strong IP that's been purchased and owned and developed further from, you know, original uh, d uh, start. The companies have come together very nicely and they're all running independently and, you know, really progressing their products forward. And do you see some progress in the net asset value? I think as we change from an R&D to a commercial focused company with much more news, uh, I think we'll start to see a revaluation of tech capital. For the better. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, Liam, Tanya, thank you so much. Thanks for If you'd like to see other interesting interviews, hopefully interesting interviews like this one, uh, please do subscribe to the London South East YouTube channel. Thank you very much indeed.